successfully from every other point of view, but we didn't have the traveller rope on, so the traveller hit the other side and just the whole thing exploded, yeah. which is pretty expensive. Yeah. So, you know, if you're, if you're clever about it, you'll get your traveller ropes, but didn't know it was on the at the time. Yeah. So in worst case now, you can fold the room around as well yeah. if you're not careful. So you can just tack around. Yeah. But then, would you be better off just sort of simply sailing straight to the mark without the spinnaker? Yeah. <laughs> Still, Jay, traveller, thing, boom, in the front, and right round over the front. On a seven, or no, I was on a four thousand, but I'm on a dinghy, but. So let's talk about good conditions instead. Yeah. <laughs> 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 just, just one point of my comment at that point is, um, lowering the spinnaker. Do you guys have someone in the pit lowering it with the clutch, or do you have the bow person lowering it at the mast? It's a really good question. Um. So, has everybody got a cleat in the mast for the heli? Or both of these? Yeah, oh. cool. So we would always use that, I think I'll speak for Stuart as well, we would always use that in the hoist, and then get it tailed through, and cleat it off in the, in the clutch, and get it out of the mast. Um, that's certainly all, all, that's what we always do, get it out of the mast. If it's stuck in the mast, and you've got everybody at the back of the boat, and I've done this once, and you try and get the kite down, you go forward and you, you trip the clutch, and the kite doesn't come down, there's a lot of panic in five people's faces. It's an easy one to do. Yeah, but it's really, really easy to do. And, mm -hmm. and the number of times that uh, it's one of the things that you know we talk about. What, what do we go through as our uh, as our checklist as uh, as a bowman? You know, Pete was talking about what well, the halyard of going around the, the shroud at the front when you're going upwind. One of the things as a bowman or a mastman when you're coming downwind is you need to remember that once you've got that kite up and it's in the the, the cleat in the mast, you need to make sure somebody's tail and got the clutch on to take the slack out of the halyard, and then you go and pull the halyard out of the, the cleat in the mast. So that, that's the pitman really that has to have that under control. Yeah. The pitman is really, really very important yeah. Yeah. On, on all the downwind legs. Yeah. With the and, eyes. And, and the reason that you tail it back through the clutch then, do you think it's quite important to do that? Because when we sailed with the, in the Nationals with John Powell, he came with his own spinnaker halyard, yeah, which was really short. Sure. Right. So that's <laughs> and he doesn't go through the clutch at all, he just has that's it. That's a J24 thing. The, uh -huh. So do you, think on, do you think it's important to have it? back through the clutch. Because um, we've yeah. started to sail our boats here where we never tail it through the clutch, we just cleat it on the mast and coil it on the deck. I think it's a personal preference thing. Yeah. But I'm just wondering why you I, I would always want to coil it through the clutch yeah. and downstairs um, out of the way so as it can't actually mm -hmm. snag. Mm -hmm. um, but then when we, got to, when we get to the drop point, <coughs> that has to be just released and um, I don't like people trying to feed it through because all that happens is it gets stuck, mm -hmm. you know, it slows halfway down mm -hmm. yep. and then it's filling in the wrong place and people are trying to go in, can't get in because somebody's holding it up and all this kind of thing. So just let it go, the guy goes, the, the halyard goes and you just grab it out of the, mm. the air. Um, and what's your system for bringing it down? Is it just, do you just have the pit person pulling it down or do you have somebody on the side well, deck as well? The sheet man goes right. and grabs it first. And then the, the sheet man does the initial um, pulling down where they pass it to the pit mm. and tidies it up. Right, so you've got two people to get it down really mm. quick. Mm. Most. I think we've got one person that does it. I think so, yeah. I think we just try and gather as much as we can and into the into their chest, and into the into the body, yeah, yeah. And, and get it in, into them, and then they just gather the whole lot and, and uh, stick it into the bag. Maybe a second person comes in and helps just for a little bit tidy yeah. towards the end. So some of it's going to be personal preference as to how people get on and, uh, and what needs to be done in the boat. But, um, typically, we always try and keep the mass mass man focused on the uh, on the boat and getting rid of the boat um, so that somebody can be ready with the jib. Um, but sometimes the person that's getting ready with the jib can get in the way of the person who's trying to get the kite down. Um, so it's all about choreographing it so that it's, it's done at the right time. Um, so that's where practice again is really important as to how long does it take us to do this manoeuvre. Uh, which part do we have to step by step go through, uh, and who's going to do what? Um, so typically, we always try and get the pole uh, cleared and away, so that I know there's not going to be any uh, kerfuffle with that uh, when we're going around the lure mark. But having said that, sometimes don't worry about the pole. Um, just get the kite down. If we've left it too late, leave the pole. Forget about that. Get the kite down. Get everybody on the rail, and then take the pole off afterwards. Um, so I guess you, you need to watch out. So you get, yeah, unless you need a jive, yeah. yeah. Um, this is where your structured practice can be can be quite good. I, yeah. I would always be an advocate. Is, is, if 
you're going to go out and practice, it's not just about going out and going sailing. It's about maybe going out and going right. We're going to do X amount of jet. We're going to drive every 30 seconds or something like that. We're going to get some more timer or find the mark that's reasonably close. Well, I'm moving. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and, uh, and just just find find it, find a mark that you can sail close to and just go up wind for a bit, come down and then just go around it and just keep doing it. Just practice your roundings and roundings because you can go up and sort of do hoist drops, but if you're just doing them whilst you're sailing along, you're not really giving yourself something to aim at to, to try and get around. So I would always just find a, a suitable mark somewhere close, and there always, there always is, uh, and then use that as part of your part of your practice, just to try and make things a little bit slicker. I actually try and do, instead of doing it every 30 seconds, right, I try and do in slow motion. Right, okay. So we talk through it, it, every single yeah. aspect. Mm -hmm. So it's just to remind everybody what we're trying to do. Yeah. And once it becomes clear, the coordination becomes clear, it helps when you're doing it for reason. I think in my sadness I used to sit and think about it at night and actually just <laughs> talk myself through all my manoeuvres in my head when I was doing all my dinghy sailing. I think that's a brilliant idea, though, right. especially for a team of five. If mm. you know you're going to be pit mm. or you're going to be guy, if you can sit in a chair and shut mm. your eyes and go, like, okay, we're coming up to the windward mark and think exactly what you're going to do, then it's mm. going to be so much more time yeah. on the water actually doing it. Isn't it? Than yeah. Thinking on it. My help and I used to sit for, because we were always travelling around the place, we'd sit for 30 minutes uh, and chat at the end before we went to sleep at night about how the day before we'd gone, yeah. what we'd done well, what we hadn't done well and, and what we could do to make the make the next day better. That's mm -hmm. really important from like, an early coaching point of view, but mm -hmm. the completing that learning cycle and doing the review mm -hmm. at the end is really important, yeah. otherwise you're just skipping steps and if you don't mm -hmm. talk about what you've done then you're just, you're not really setting up the next session properly. Really important to to do the post mortem, like some people call it, or the review. <laughs> Can I ask a question about sailing angles coming downwind. If you is your VMG better? What are your sailing your driving angles? So that are you? Is it best in a run? Is it best broad reaching? I mean, what in your experience is the all things being equal, straight downwind. There's no it's wind shifts. Well, it's well. really hard to say. Uh, that's it's not. There isn't an answer to that because sometimes. Some people can make it work by going up a little bit and just getting a little bit better speed, which turns into VMG. Um, but um, quite often it's, it's best just heading for the mark. Mostly, actually, it's just best heading for the mark, keeping your distance sailed down. Yeah, it's strong wind anyway, I'm pretty sure it's straight to the, to the mark, I would think. And, and again, it depends how strong it is. Um, yeah. Um, I was just counting the time Andy just sailed round about us one time by doing the going up a little bit and, and coming down. No, but you can catch some waves, I suppose. You sort yeah, sort of down a bit. You're going up, and sometimes windy. you can catch the wave and just yeah. you know, a little spurt on and so on. And we were just going straight to the mark and it wasn't working that day. Similarly, we were sailing um, a couple of years ago on uh, a Royal Fort at the, in the Nationals, and um, it, there wasn't a lot of wind. And uh, normally it would just be to sail straight to the mark. We're going against the tide, and pitch and company went off on a, on a higher course and sailed off into the tide, and came back ahead of us, which was really annoying. <laughs> 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 Meanwhile, the guys on the other side of the coast had got wind coming in from the other side, and so everybody passed us. That's good. Good reason. 